Good morning, uh, good afternoon, everybody, wherever you are. Good evening. God bless you abundantly. Uh, this is Pastor Edward Sentongo, uh, and I'm here for our hour of word and prayer. Praise God. Praise the Son of the Living God. Lord, we thank you. We honor and glorify you, and we welcome you in this place. You are welcome in this place as we get ready to fight the good fight of faith. Yes, Paul said of faith that I've fought the good fight of faith because it's a fight. I fought the good fight of faith. I've run this race set before me and now I am ready to wear the crown of glory. Praise the Son of a living God. Whoever has just joined us, may God bless you abundantly. This is Pastor Edward Sintongo, uh, and you're not here by accident. It is by divine appointment that you have tuned in. Uh, Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life, and he wants you to be saved. Praise the Son of the living God. He died on the cross for each and every one of us. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through him. In other words, in order for you to be a part of the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Praise the Son of a living God. He said, you know, you must be born of water and spirit. You must be born again in order for you to be a part of the kingdom of God. Praise God. And so you are not here by accident. If you have not accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, please do. Because without him, there is eternal hell. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of righteousness is eternal life through Christ, the Son of the living God. Only through him do we have eternal life. Praise the Son of the living God. And so I'm going to start with a prayer. Uh, today I had a... Uh, an experience i'm going to share my testimony with you about the power of jesus christ the son of a living god um but first let's start with the prayer and i welcome the holy spirit I, the word of god declares where two or three are gathered in my name there i will be in your midst and i do believe that the holy spirit is present uh and i thank uh, our father in heaven who has made it possible uh, for me as a believer to share with you Praise the Son of the Living God on account of having accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior by grace through faith. Uh, he has used me as a, a vessel uh, to reconcile others to uh, the kingdom in Christ Jesus. Praise the Son of a Living God. So I'm here as an ambassador of Christ uh, and to preach the gospel uh, that others may be saved even as I was saved. Praise God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Lord, I honor and glorify you, King of kings, Lord of lords, Alpha and Omega. I pray that your glory is revealed, Lord. My God, I pray you touch each and every one that is gathered here today. Lord, we come before your throne of grace to find grace and mercy in this here, our time of need, Lord. I, I pray that you forgive us for each and everything that we say, done, or thought that does not glorify your name, Lord. We repent of our sins. Anything we say, done, or thought, even heard or seen that does not glorify your name, Lord, we pray that you forgive us. We pray that you forgive us and wash us with the blood of your Son, Jesus. The Word of God declares in First John 1, 7, that if we are willing to come to the marvelous light, which is you, our Heavenly Father, the blood of your Son, Jesus, is sufficient to wash our sins away. For you so love the world that he sent your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, we come before your throne of grace, and on behalf of each and every one, Lord, even on Facebook, because there's so many things that have gone on on Facebook, a lot of immorality, sin, unrighteousness. We do not judge, for you do not come to judge or condemn, but to save that which was lost, to call sinners to repentance. And it is the goodness of the Lord, according to your word in Romans 2, 4, that leads men unto repentance. Lord, I thank you for your patience, for your long suffering. Uh, even when we were yet sinners, you loved us. Lord, I thank you that yet you died on the cross, that we may be washed clean, that our sins may be forgiven if we repent. And I thank you for the precious blood that you shed on the cross. May it prevail. 
For the Word of God declares uh, that the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ speaks better things than that of Abel. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, not loving our lives even unto death. So be it according to your word in the name of Jesus. May your precious blood prevail against the enemy. We overcome any spirit of witchcraft, sorcery, divination on this line, anything that is anti-Christ. We dismantle every network of the devil. We bind every strong man of evil, sickness and disease, poverty, death, luck. Anything that is not of God, every spirit of sin and unrighteousness, we bind today, right now, in the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the great Amen. Yahweh, my Lord and my Savior, my light and my salvation, the rock of my salvation. I pray that you arise, Jehovah, let your enemies be scattered. Yes, Lord, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of darkness, principalities and powers. Any principality and power, we are standing firm on the word of God in Colossians 2 verse 15. Lord, you made a public spectacle of principalities and powers and triumphed over them on the cross. It is the blood that was shed on the cross that now gives us victory. Yes, you overcame death. You who were once dead now live forever and ever. You live forever and ever. May your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let your will be done. And everybody say, Amen. We are going to be built of an imperishable seed, the living word of God. And I pray that it touches your heart. And I pray that the Holy Spirit opens your heart. Praise God. That you may know that which is the perfect will of God. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus. But before we do that, I'm going to start with the praise song. Yesterday, I didn't get to the praise song because uh, the Holy Spirit was leading me uh, to uh, uh, to teach on uh, uh, something else. And uh, I had to obey. Uh, but today, uh, we're going to have a chance to uh, praise. We always worship, but we're going to praise. Sometimes all you need to do is praise God, glorify God, glorify God for you are alive. So many people have died. Glorify God that you are not sick. So many people are in hospital. So many people are going through so many things. And yes, if you are that one such person that is going through those things, the power of God is present to bring healing in your body, in your soul, in your spirit. Praise the Son of the living God. Through being born again, when you become born again, you are delivered from things. Praise the Son of the living God. It is the reason why Christ died on the cross. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and and by his stripes, because of the stripes that he took on the cross, we are healed in spirit, soul, and body. That is what Christ did for each and every one of us. Praise God. I am a testimony of that. I am a testimony of what God has done. What God has done for us. It is by grace through faith. Praise God. On a daily basis, I go through attacks. And I'm going to share my testimony today. Because people that are that are online not everybody that gathers with us is of us not everybody that gathers and like I said I have people who are Muslims on my friends list who are um, Buddhists and I love each and every one I preach the gospel so that we may all be saved praise God and they're born again believers they're people who are Catholic they're people who are uh, witches and wizards so so I pray to everybody because God died for it Christ died for everybody. The Son of God died for everybody. He called he came to call sinners to repentance. He came to call sinners to repentance. And he laid down his life that all of us may be born again. Praise God. So I do not limit where I preach to whom I preach. But there are some people that are evil, who have an evil intent, uh, who do not want anything to do with God. And today, uh, I encountered one such, one such person. I'm not going to disclose their name. They are from India. They are from India. And if you are listening, if you are from India, and you are that person who gave me a call. It was a video call. And they had this this um, uh, 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 altar, altar of the devil. And they were chanting things and chanting things that were not of God. And they were chanting evil things. And, and the Holy Spirit warned me before I took the call. But I said, Lord, I pray you deal with that. And so when I picked up this video call, uh, this man was chanting things. I don't know what evil things, but clearly it was evil. And then I was speaking in tongues and I was speaking in the name of Jesus. And this man all of a sudden he turned off the... 
the, 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 uh, the, the video call, the power of God hit him. And that is the power that I'm talking about. In the mighty name of Jesus, if you are a witch, a wizard, if you are practicing any sorcery, divination, if you are a Muslim, if you are a Buddhist, a Hinduist, I am here to tell you that there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God, who Rababa Shandra Baba Shakaya is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the King of Kings. When you are a child of God, you do not have fear. I do not have fear. God did not give me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. So when I preach, I preach with the power and anointing of the spirit of a living God. And so whatever it is that anybody is doing, whether you're witch or and you're gathering to do evil, I rebuke that evil in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, the creator of the heaven and earth. The word that was there in the beginning was with God, was God. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke the enemy. And I pray that each and every one of us become born again, because that's why we preach the gospel. That none may perish, but that all should come to full repentance. Christ does not desire that any perish, but that all come to full repentance. He died. He loved us so much. God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him may not perish. Friends, let me tell you, there is a hell. The wages of sin is death. Anybody practicing witchcraft, sorcery, divination, any kind of religion that is not of that it is not God, if you're not worshiping Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, you are going to hell. That is as simple as that. But if you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and that is the good news, praise God. If you come to Christ, He does not judge, He does not condemn, praise God. I was a sinner, I was a drunkard, I did so many things, so many of those things. I even visited Buddhist temples, I can tell you that. So I know those things. I went to the mosque, I went to schools that were Muslim schools. I know all those things. But I can tell you that there is no power that is, that is greater than the power of Jesus Christ. There is no name. That is above any name than the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Jesus Christ is a name above every name. Um, every name. Praise the Son of the Living God. Open your Bibles with me in Philippians chapter 2. Christ, the Son of the Living God. I'm talking about the risen Christ who rose from the dead over 2,000 years ago. Not any Christ because there are so many Christs in these last days. People, they, 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 and, and Christ wonders about those things. Praise God. And many will come in my name. Others will say Christ is here, Christ is there. Christ is in heaven. And yes, whoever believes in him, the word of God declares in John uh, chapter 7, verse 38, that whoever believes in Jesus Christ is their personal Lord and Savior, out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. It is a hard thing. It is believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth and to salvation. You believe in your heart and to our righteousness, praise God, the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, and you are saved. That is the truth. There is no other, don't let anybody tell you that there are many ways to heaven other than Jesus Christ, the Son, living God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Praise God. No other. Praise God. And so please go with me. No weapon formed against us that shall prosper. Any tongue that goes against us, that's the word of God, Isaiah 54 verse 17. Any tongue that goes against us, it is condemned. So if you're a witch or wizard and you're chanting things and you're chanting so that people die. This man had, I didn't give you the other part of the testimony. He has a baby on his, on his. Um, he knows who he is. <laughs> he may be listening. He has a baby as, as his uh, uh, um, photo on his uh, uh, Facebook page. And then he sent a naked baby. I don't know whether even he's a, a child, he practices child sacrifice. We have those kinds of people. Can you imagine? On Facebook. And I'm going to report it to Facebook. Because there's so many things. How do you expose a little baby who's new? And I don't know whether that baby is even dead. And then this man is chanting evil things and chanting evil things, giving me a video call. I cast out those demon spirits from that man, whoever it is, in the name of Jesus. The word of God declares in Philippians chapter 2, and we read it yesterday, that Christ, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. Praise God. 
If you're not a believer, please accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior because you won't understand what I'm talking about and you won't even have the, uh, this mind if you do not born, you're not born again. You have to be born again, praise God. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, praise the Son of the living God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Yes, the Son of the living God is God himself is was in the form of God. He's called equal with God. He's the Son of the living God. There are three that witness a witness in heaven. There are three witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He on earth, the Spirit of God, the water, which is the word of the word, and the blood of Jesus Christ, which points to the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Praise the Son of living God. It is the blood that washes our sins away. It is the blood that gives us deliverance. It is the blood of the Lamb of God that gives us life. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that gives us victory. Praise the Son of the over witchcraft, sorcery, and divination. So that no demon in hell can touch you as a born again believer. These signs shall follow those that believe. The word of God declares in Mark 16, 15 to 17. They shall cast out demons. They shall speak in new tongues. And so this man was chanting his evil things. And I was just speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit was doing the work. Praise the Son of the And and behold, he just turns off his video because he, the power of God hit him. In the name of Jesus. That is the power that I'm talking about. That when you are a born again believer, you have protection from the enemy. God himself protecting you. Praise the son of living God. Listen to this. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant. Christ took the form of a bond servant for you and I. Yes, this is what he did. And coming in the likeness of men. He came in the likeness of men, of sin flesh where God declares in verse 8 and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross praise the son of a living God therefore God has also therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name praise the son of a living God I just mentioned the name of Jesus Christ the son of a living God and this man was hit with the power of God and he turned off his video whatever he, he, that, that he was trying to chant and call me and, and he say evil things Praise the Son of the living God. The power of God, let it hit you wherever you are in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. He is our Savior. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha and Omega. Friends, do not play with witchcraft, sorcery, divination, those things. That's evil. Do not defile yourselves with any spirit, whether it's Muhammad or whatever. Those are demon spirits, genies, things that are not of God. It is only Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that saves Praise the Son of a living God. He says in verse 9, Therefore God has uh, also has ex highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee, listen to this, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven, listen to this, of those in heaven, they are angels in heaven, they worship Jesus Christ day in, day out, every minute, every second, there is no time in heaven, every Every fraction of a second in our time is dedicated to worshiping Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. The angels sing, Holy, 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 holy are you. Thou art worthy to be praised. Praise the Son of the living God. It says here in verse 9, Therefore God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, not just those in heaven, but of those on earth, which means you and I praise the Son of a living God, of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth, which means even Satan and his demonic angels, which Christ made a public spectacle and triumphed over them. Yes, he will bow down. When you mention the name of Jesus, witchcraft, sorcery, any spirit of evil, they bow down. Praise the Son of a living God. Even right now, as the man of God, I decree and declare that every demonic serpentine spirit that is attacked you, attack me, attacking everybody with sickness and disease, poverty, dead luck, with sin and unrighteousness, spirit of religion, bow down. 
in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. In the name of Jesus. Verse 11 says, and that every tongue should confess, every tongue should confess, I repeat, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father who sent him. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise the Son of Living God. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. In the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm going to take you to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, so that you understand that the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross for you and I, it is not anything compared to the earthly things that we see in the world. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, says, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold. We are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. And some of you have, you know, your, your fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, they've been Muslims, they've been Catholics, they've been witches and wizards from age, so many practicing Judaism, practicing Buddhism or Hinduism, whatever it is. None of it is going to save you. It is only the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that saves you, saves you. Praise God. That saved us. Praise God. It says, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without a blemish and without spot, Praise the Son of a living God. That is what saves us. He says, He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world. He was foreordained. Can you imagine? Before even Adam and Eve sinned, Christ, because God is the Alpha and Omega. God is the beginning and the end. God is the author and the finish of our faith. God is the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He saw it before it even happened. Before Adam and Eve sinned and disobeyed God, listening to that old serpent called the devil, the Lamb of God that was slain for the forgiveness of our sins was foreordained that he would die for you and I on the cross that we may all be saved. Praise the Son of a living God. And the word of God declares he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world. How infinite is our God. How powerful is our God. He's omniscient, all-knowing. He's omnipotent. He's omnipotent meaning he's all-powerful. He is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the end. He's limitless. This man who was a witch was trying to chant things and the power of God hit him right there because God is infinite. God is omnipresent. The power of God hit him and he just stopped whatever he was chanting. That is the power of God in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because of the finished work of Christ, now we have the power, that authority to call those things that are not as though they are, to cast out demons, to dismantle the network of the devil. And I dismantle every network of evil. You may be suffering from any kind of sin and unrighteousness, pornography, masturbation, pedophilia, people that sleep with little kids, demonic oppression of any sort, oppression, depression, possession of any sort by any demons. I Bind those strong men of the devil in the name of Jesus, the Son of Living God. Anybody suffering from prostitution, from sexual immorality, adultery, fornication, name it, LGBTQ, I bind those demonic serpentine spirits, even as I speak in the name of Jesus. Marine spirits, lying spirits, seducing spirits, I bind them right now in the mighty name of Jesus with the authority that God gave me in Luke 10, 19, Luke 9, 1, Matthew 18, 18, and 16, 19. That whatsoever thing we bind you on earth will be bound in heaven. Let it be bound in the name of Jesus, the Son of a living God. The word of God declares in verse 21, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. If your faith and hope are in God, you have the power. God fights for you. One of his names is Jehovah Nissi, the banner of victory. Hura Baba Shangara Baba Shakaya. He fought the he, he won the battle on the cross. Victory is in the mighty name of Jesus. Victory is in Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. It is what gives us victory. We overcome by the blood of a lamb, by the word of our testimony, not loving our lives, even unto death. Praise the Son of Living God. Now I'm gonna to go to praise because I don't wanna lose the moment of praise. 
um, as we praise God, praise God, and uh, we are still on the topic of fasting. Muslims fast, uh, people who practice Judaism fast, Catholics fast, believers like me, we fast. But the question is, what kind of fast are you fasting? And if you're not a believer, you know that you are fasting, a fasting that does not please God because you're not a believer. You have to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and then God will accept your fast. Praise God. Like I said, I, I went through Muslim schools. I, trained, I went through a school that practices, uh, that, that um, has people that practice Judaism. I didn't practice Judaism myself, but I know about all those things. I've visited synagogues. I've visited mosques. I've visited, visited uh, Buddhist temples. All that is evil. And I say the truth in love. Praise God. That you may know the truth. For the, you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Praise God. Who for whom the Son is set free is free indeed. It is the Son of God, Christ, the Son of the living God, that sets us free. No other. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I believe that the Spirit of God is speaking to you even as I speak right now. There is a reason why you're watching. And God wants to use you in mighty ways. Whether you're a Muslim, we know about Muslims that have become born again and are, are now preaching the gospel. Christ is appearing in visions and dreams to Muslims. To people who are practicing Judaism in this Bible, in the Bible. Please listen to this very carefully. And if you are that person who is practicing Judaism and are still confused whether Jesus Christ is the Messiah, Saul of Tarsus was persecuting the church. He did not know that he was persecuting Christ. He thought he was doing the work of God, but yet he was persecuting Jesus Christ. And on the road to Damascus, on his way to go and persecute the church, he has this blinding light which reveals Christ, the Son of a living God. And his eyes are blinded. And he was confused. He says, Lord, who, who, who are you? He called him Lord, but yet he was asking, who are you? Those are the miracles that are going to start to happen, even in the Muslim world, in the Arabic countries, in, in, uh, to the Jews, to those that are practicing Buddhism and Hinduism, even witches and wizards. Christ is the Son of a living God who died for the forgiveness of our sins. Do not be confused by the lies of the enemy. Praise the Son of the living God. And so Saul of Tarsus, yes, formerly Saul of Tarsus, who was persecuting the church, gets a revelation of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And he went into a fast. He fasted for three days because he recognized that he had been persecuting, persecuting the Son of the living God. He fasted for three days and three nights. His eyes were blinded by this light. And three days later, God sends a man of God called Ananias to lay hands on Saul of Tarsus. And he is transformed supernaturally. He becomes born again. Praise the Son of the living God. He receives the gift of the Spirit of God and starts to speak in tongues. Today we have almost a third, a third, a third, almost two thirds I believe. Praise God. Of the New Testament, the Pauline letters or the letters uh, to the churches that were written by, mostly by Paul, Holy Spirit filled because of the revelation that God gave to Paul, who was now transformed from a person who was persecuting the church, persecuting Jesus Christ, and some of you may be persecuting Christ through witchcraft and sorcery and divination and doing all kinds of things and cursing men of God and women of God. But I'm here to tell you that when you fight a man of God, a woman of God, you lose. You must accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you will be saved. Praise the Son of the God. And so Paul had to learn and he had a revelation. And so I preach this truth in love to let you know that you have to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He is the only way, the truth and the life. He is the only one that can take you to heaven. Praise the Son of the living God. Anything outside of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is evil. Praise God. And that truth told in love. Now we're going to go into our praise. Praise God. Let us praise uh, the Heavenly Father. And I do believe that God is going to be doing mighty things, even right now as I speak, he's delivering somebody. Praise God. This praise song is uh, by Eddie James. It's called Awakening. The church is being awakened. The world is being awakened. So, let's go. All right, let's start over. All right, let's praise God. 
Honor and glory belong to him and him alone. Hura Baba Shandra Baba Shakaya. Hura Bashikayata. Thank you, Jesus, for your loving kindness and tender mercies. We bind every storm of the Lord. We honor and glorify you. We worship you. We praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your name be praised. Let everything that has breath, has breath, praise you. Hallelujah. Hura Baba Shandra Baba Shaka. Hallelujah. Pura Baba Shaka. Arise and shine. Pura Bashika Taramandiri Ribo Shakaya. If you're a believer, arise and shine. If you're not yet a believer, please accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Because awakening is coming to your city. The power of God is coming to your city. In the name of Jesus, I proclaim it, I decree it to be so. Hura Baba Shandra Baba Shaka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hura Baba Shaka Ramaman Diribo Shaka. Is Jehovah Nisi our banner of victory? And he's doing something new. He's changing cities. Hallelujah. It's coming to your city. Awakening is coming to your city. It's coming to your church. Hallelujah. You can call it a war cry, but we are praising God because He's doing something new. And He's changing places. He's breaking bondages, even as I speak right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Awaken your people, Lord. Arise, Jehovah. Let your enemies be scattered, even as I speak in the name of Jesus. Any evil forces of darkness, principalities and powers, we bind in the name of Jesus. Territorial spirits in cities in Europe, Asia, Africa, South America, North America, Africa, Australia, we bind in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 If you're a believer, let us pray together for salvation, the salvation of souls. For the message of Christ, the message of the cross to be preached everywhere. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Hura Baba Shandra Baba Shakaya. Hallelujah. Christ triumphed. Yes, he made, he made a public spectacle of, of all the principalities and powers. Hallelujah. And triumphed over them on the cross. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, not loving our lives even unto death. So be it in the name of Jesus. The angels are warring. Angels are ministering spirits to fight on our behalf. According to the word of God in Hebrews 1.14. So be it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We rebuke the spirit of religion, the spirit of evil, the spirit of antichrist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Awakening is coming. Yes. In the Middle East, people will be saved. God is doing something new. In the name of Jesus. In Israel, the Jews will be saved. 
in America, in Africa, they will be saved. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every soul. In the name of Jesus, witches, wizards, they will be saved. In the name of Jesus. In the church, judgment starts from the house of the Lord. We decree and declare favor with man and with God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Yeshua HaMashiach is our Lord and our Savior. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the rock of our salvation. He is the light of the world. In the name of Jesus. The word of God that was there in the beginning was with God, was God. Creator of the heaven and earth. Hallelujah. I declare and declare that you shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our God is a consuming fire. Yes. In Jeremiah 20:29, 20, the word of God declares, Is in my word like fire. Is in my word like a hammer that crushes rocks unto pieces. Whatever it is that is that is going on in your life, let it be annihilated, decimated, obliterated. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. We thank God for this time. And we thank him that he is in our midst. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name. Yes, there are some evil people, that, I, like I said, that may gather to do evil. But where two or three amongst us that are gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, where two or three are gathered in my name, he said, there I will be in your midst. And so he is in our midst. Praise God. He is the author and the finish of our faith. In the name of Jesus. Go with me to Isaiah 58 because that's where we stopped and we're going to complete Isaiah 58 talking about fasting. Um, I, I said earlier that the Muslims fast, the people that practice Judaism fast, Catholics and other religions are going through what they call Lent season and they do what they call Ash Wednesday. But we understand, and yes, believers first, we believers who believe in Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, uh, fasting is any time of the year. It is not just during Lent season. It is any time of the year. And it can be a corporate fast. It can be a fast that is personal. Uh, you're fasting. Why do we fast? First of all, we fast to be in the presence of God. It is one of the spiritual sacrifices. We present our bodies as a living sacrifice. So when Paul said in Romans 12, 1 to 2, that I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord. Which Lord are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Not Mohammed, not Buddha, not any God, any little God, but God, the Creator, who sent His only begotten Son and Jesus Christ who died for for the forgiveness of our sins. He so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life. And so when we fast as believers, and if you're not a believer, please accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. For without accepting Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you do not have access to the kingdom of God. But whoever accepted him, whoever accept, accepts Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, he gives the right to become a child of God in the kingdom of God. He gives you power and authority. Praise the Son of a living God. To trump upon serpents and scorpions, to cast out demons, to speak in new tongues. You hear me speak in new tongues every now and then. It is by the Spirit of God. And I don't know what he's doing in your heart. But he's drawing you in. Praise God. Praise God. Because we don't know what to pray for. We don't know what to say. But the Spirit of God who works in and through us draws men unto Christ. Ultimately, it is the goodness of the Lord that draws men unto repentance. And so when we speak in new tongues, when we cast out demons, that's what happens. Deliverance happens to the people. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus. So go with me to Isaiah 58, praise God. And let's complete this uh, teaching, praise God. So if you are not a believer, please accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Fasting that pleases God is only through a believer, praise God. And that fasting, even when you're a believer, is 
is not to please men, but to please God. And that and the first thing that pleases God is if you want to be in the presence of God, you want to be pure and holy, even as he who was called us is pure and holy. Praise God. You want to be sanctified. The purpose of fasting is for us to be sanctified, to be emptied of all evil and unrighteousness, for our hearts to be right with God. The word of God declares, blessed are those with a pure heart, for they shall see God. Praise the Son of the living God. In Hebrews 12, verse 14, the word of God declares that seek peace with all men. Now, the peace we're talking about is not the peace as the world gives, but the peace that comes from Jehovah Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Christ is the Prince of Peace. Praise the Son of the living God. And he says, seek peace with all men. Praise the Son of the living God. And so that peace that Christ gives us, we must give back to everybody. Praise God, regardless of who they are. Praise God, what they believe. That peace I speak into your life that you may recognize that the peace that you need is the peace of God that comes from Christ, the Prince of Peace. Praise the Son of the Living God. He said to his disciples, Peace I give you, not as the world gives, but the peace that comes from heaven. Praise the Son of the Living God. The peace that surpasses all understanding only comes through Christ, the Son of the Living God. And so when we fast is to have the peace, to have the rest in Christ Jesus. When we fast is to be in the presence of God. When we fast is to be sanctified, purified as we wait for the return of Jesus Christ, the Son of living on it. Friends, he's coming back soon. He's coming back for a holy and unblemished church. But today, if you hearken the voice of God and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, you will be saved. The word of God declares, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise the Son of the living God. And so in Isaiah 58, uh, Prophet Isaiah, a great man of God, dealing with this issue and being used by God to speak to this fasting the, and speaking to the Israelites. But today he's speaking to us as well, praise God. Some Israelites that were fasting just to show that they were fasting. And at the same time, they were complaining about God and they were not doing what they ought to do. Listen to this in verse 6, Isaiah 58 verse 6 says, Is this not the fast? And this is the fast that God that pleases God that God wants us to have as born again believers. If you're not a born again believer, please accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness? Praise the Son of the Living God to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? It says, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover them and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Praise the Son of the Living God. This fast that he was talking to the children of Israel. It was Israel it was a chosen, a chosen nation. It was a holy nation, a consecrated from all the nations by God for the purpose of preparing them for the Messiah that was to come. And through Israel, the Messiah came. That Messiah is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who died on the cross for you and I. Praise the Son of the living God. He came from the tribe of Judah, one of the tribes of Israel. And he is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, who now is speaking in and through me. To you, praise the Son of the living God, that you must be saved. Praise the Son of the living God in order for you to be a part of the kingdom of God. Praise God. It is not through Buddhism. It is not through Islam. It is not through Hinduism. It is not through Judaism. Even those people that were practicing Judaism in this time, they were practicing Judaism. And God allowed it because he's the one who chose them out. Praise God. And consecrated them as a holy nation. But today, under the new covenant, praise the Son of the living God, which is sealed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The first that he is calling for us. Yes, it is still the same fast. Praise God. Not under the old covenant, but under the new covenant. The fast that pleases God is a fast where we do not just fast to show people that we are fasting, put ashes on our faces that, oh, we are fasting. In fact, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus Christ mentions that kind of hypocrisy of the Pharisees where they were fasting and they were making crooked faces and faces to show that, oh, they were so annoyed with the, the sin and unrighteousness yet in they were in their hearts there was evil there was wickedness and that fast does not please god 
Let us recap in Matthew chapter 6, praise God, so that you understand what I am talking about for those of you who are not with us. Matthew 6, verse 16, it says, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. So they were putting on sad countenance. And, and it was a custom for the children of Israel at the time to put ashes in their faces and wear what they call sackcloth to show that they were fasting. And yes, there were some genuine people that fasted during that time, but there were some that were fasting just to show, yet in their hearts they harbored evil and unrighteousness. Today in the church, or what is called the church, and there are some churches out there that God does not even recognize as churches because they believe in sin and unrighteousness, they believe in same-sex marriage, they believe in homosexuality, and they don't believe that homosexuality is a, a sin, when clearly it is a sin. They believe in so many things, there is backstabbing and evil and strife in the church today. Which is not any different from those that practice Buddhism and Hinduism and Judaism and Islam. The true church of God. Christ says, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. I should I say to you that they have their reward. Now the true church that and the true first of the true church that is led by the Spirit, and that's why it's important to become born again. Praise God. To fast a spiritual first, he says, but you, when you fast, if you are a born again believer, you will understand. If you're not a born again believer, please become born again. And this is the true fast that God calls for each and every one of us to fast, not ashes and all these things that are happening only for people to, after the fast, to go into binge drinking and killing and cursing and hating one another. We talked about that the other day. In verse 17, it says, but you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. Praise God. So that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place. Our father is in the secret place. He knows in, in a secret place that he's talking about here is the heart. Praise God. Do not harbor evil for a brother, sister. Do not hate, even though they are wicked. And yes, there are some wicked people out there. I just told you about the wicked, the witches and the wizards, and the witch person that was trying to attack me, chanting evil things. I do not hate him, but I hate the evil behind him. And I cast out those demons. Praise God. We are to cast out the demons. Understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, according to Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, but against spiritual forces of darkness, principalities and powers, Satan himself, who's mask, who's, who masquerades behind people. What a God declares. He masquerades as an angel of light when he is an angel of darkness. And yes, he uses people, which Christ called ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing they put on a facade uh, of goodness and and yes we are good when in their heart they harbor evil and so christ deals with this issue says so that you do not appear to men to be fasting but to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly praise god and so if you fast going back to isaiah 58 praise god when you fast, and you fast with good intent to be in the presence of God, that your heart may be purified, sanctified, that you may be filled with love of God that transcends all knowledge, that you may be filled with the purity of God, that you may serve God. And serving God is not so much as in just simply say, talking about it, but doing it. And first, uh, I believe it's James 1 verse 22, praise God, the word of God declares, let us not just be hearers of the word of God, but be doers of the word of God, James 1 22, praise God. And First Peter 1 23 says, we are built of an imperishable seed, the living word of God. So if the word of God is in you, then you will begin to understand that you must not just keep the word in you, but demonstrate, demonstrate with the love of God. To those who are poor, those who are uh, naked, those who, uh, nakedness here and the poverty here is not so much as in just physical poverty, but poverty in the spirit where people do not know God and need to know God. Going back to Isaiah 58 verse 6, it says, is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness? Uh, losing the bonds of wickedness means that you tell the truth in love. If you do not tell the truth in love and you let people continue in homosexuality, you lie to them that, oh, that's how you were created. That is not losing the bond of wickedness. That is keeping people in bondage to wickedness. It says, is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens? 
Christ died and died that those burdens, the burdens of and we're not judging, we're not judging. Christ did not come to judge or condemn. He came to call sinners to repentance. Praise God. I was a sinner. I can tell you the thing. I did so many evil things. But Christ delivered me from those things. Praise God. He wants to deliver us from those things. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, says, Come to me, O ye who labor, and are heavy laden. Those burdens, he wants to take them off of you. Who labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. The rest is in Christ Jesus. He's saying, My heart is lowly. My heart is gentle. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. Praise God. And what is his burden? What is his yoke? His yoke is if you do the will of God. You carry your cross. I am carrying my cross right now. Praise God. And it is heavy. I've told you about the attacks. <laughs> Praise God. It is heavy. But who lifts that burden off of me? It is Christ, the Son of the living God. Praise God. Who was once dead, but now lives forever. It is the Spirit of God that is within me that fights on my behalf. Praise God. And I pray that you receive that message and the truth in love. Praise God. And so the Word of God declares to loose the bonds of wickedness. That's the first that God recognizes. To undo the heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. Christ died on the cross that the oppressed may be set free. And that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? Praise God. In the bread, we understood that, yes, it is both the physical and the spiritual bread. Praise God. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, then actions are done. Praise God. But here they were fasting and they were complaining about God. We're talking about the Israelites in this scripture. Praise God. And today, yes, we see that as well. People in churches, they say, oh, we are giving bread, bread, food pantries. They have food pantries. All these churches these days that are seeker friendly, they have food pantries. And they, they appear to be doing things that are good. But yet, in their heart, is it right with God if you claim homosexuality is not a sin when you know that it is a sin? Is it to be right with God when you continue in witchcraft and sorcery and divination and you entertain which Christ said that woman called Jezebel, which is what we see in churches that accept homosexuality and same-sex marriage and adultery and fornication. I'm talking about homosexuality, but the adultery and fornication is in the same category. Pornography must have been all those things that are evil. If you are that person that is accepting those things in your heart, just Give them to Christ. Cast your burdens to Jesus Christ. Psalms 55 verse 22 says, praise God. And ask why Christ died on the cross. If you go to Isaiah 61, praise God, verse 2, he says to the, the reason why Christ died. And of course, let's start from verse 1. He says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, he said, because the Lord has anointed me. And he quoted this very word after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, when the enemy attacked him and tempted him and he overcame. He said that this scripture has been fulfilled and it was fulfilled from the time that Christ came here on earth. When he died on the cross and shed his blood for you and I, praise the son of the living God, he set us free. All that believe by grace through faith are set free. For whom the son has set free is free indeed, praise God. If you reject the son of the living God, then you're not set free. You're still in bondage. The word of God declares, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me in these words. Christ said, quoting Isaiah, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. And he expects us to do the same as born again believers. Praise God that his people may be set free. Christ working in and through us to set his people free. Praise God. If you have the spirit of Christ in you, you understand that that is the purpose for which he has called us as ambassadors of Christ to be reconcilers, praise God, of all his people to God. Not we reconciling, but Christ working in and through us, pleading in and through us as he's pleading in and through me right now, that you may be reconciled to God in Christ Jesus. It says to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. That's why Christ died on the cross. And he set us free when we accept him as our personal Lord and Savior. We are totally free. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In verse 2, it continues. It says, and the day of vengeance of our God. Vengeance to what? Vengeance to evil, sin, and unrighteousness. To the enemy. That old serpent called the devil. Christ overcame. He made a public spectacle of the enemy on the cross. In Colossians 2.15, we read yesterday. And he made a public spectacle of all principalities and powers and triumphed over them. But now it is up to you and I to accept by grace through faith that victory and walk in it. Praise God. That we may have dominion over every area of our lives. 
That's why people are suffering from sickness and disease, poverty, dead and mark, from struggle with sin and unrighteousness. Those things you can overcome in Christ Jesus. Praise God. He says, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Praise God. He died to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion. Praise God. To give them beauty for ashes. Praise God. Beauty for ashes. Where there was mourning and more ashes and sackcloth is, is, was a, a demonstration of mourning for sin. Even though Sam abused it, as we see in Isaiah 58, somewhere abusing it. When Christ died specifically, that we may receive beauty for ashes, all of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness in the planning of the Lord, that he may be glorified, praise God, to the honor and glory of God our Father. Praise God, Christ died. Going back to 7, it says, it is not, is it not, he says, to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Praise God. So demonstrate in the hurt and in the physical as you first. Praise God. Out of a pure heart. Praise God. In verse 8, it says, then your light shall break forth. When you do that first, out of a, a, a heart that is believing, that believes in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, this is when your light will break forth. It says, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. Praise the Son of the living God. It says, then your healing shall spread forth speedily. Shall spring forth speedily. Look at that. I, oh, I love this. It says, your healing shall spring forth speedily. Friends, I've been to, uh, um, to, to churches which are Holy Spirit filled. Praise God. That believe in the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit, praise God. And we're seeing miracles happening in these churches that believe in the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. Born again believers, praise God. We are people, even people who do not have hands. I said that yesterday. I'm going to continue to say it as a, a testimony. People don't have hands growing, getting healed supernaturally from all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. Speedily. Listen to this. When you fast, a spiritual fast. Listen to this. This is powerful. He says, your healing shall spring forth speedily speedily with supernatural speed praise the son of a living god i had never got this revelation i just read it and i said wow your healing then your light shall break forth like the morning your healing shall spring forth speedily in azusa revival one of the greatest revivals of our time in california on a small street called azusa Praise the son of a living God. There was a black man with one eye. A man who was living in a times when there was a lot of slavery. There was a lot of things going on. Even in the church. They did not believe in the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. They despised anything to do with healing. And the things that happened in the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost. They said those were things of the past. They did not happen in our time. That was a one time thing. There were people from denominations. The Baptist denomination. Others were Methodists. Others. And, and that is why I preach against. I preach against people believing in just denominationalism. Denominationalism is not going to take you anywhere. Religion will will not save you. And do not believe in denominationalism at all. So anybody that believes in denominationalism and religion, you're not going to get this speedy healing. And so this man, this black man with the one eye, God uses mightily. In the church at a time when there was resistance of the spirit of God. There were men, white men, who didn't, they did not even allow black men to sit in the pews, in the front pews, let alone even in the church. If the church was filled with uh, white people, the black people were supposed to sit in the back, in the back of the church. If, they, if there was a white person that came and wanted to sit, the black person had to leave and stay outside. And this man, the, 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 Testimony says in one of the book, uh, Azusa Street uh, books, look it up, praise God. Miracles at Azusa Street. Get by that book, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And so this man uh, would listen to the teachings, would listen to the teachings outside. And then some of them believed, believed in the power of the Holy Spirit, eventually. But they did not give their hearts completely. And so this man really listened to the scripture and the teaching of one of the, uh, um, uh, a teacher called Parham. 
And he was listening to the teaching from outside of the church. Can you imagine peeping and listening? And then he went and believed that in this day and era, and the Holy Spirit used him in mighty ways. He believed that miracles can happen, that people can speak in tongues. At that time, they did not believe in speaking in tongues. And, and then God started powering his spirit. And people started speaking in tongues. Praise the Son of a living God. I'm one such person that never believed in speaking in tongues. Now God is using me. And I'm speaking in tongues. And I'm preaching his gospel. Praise the Son of a living God. Because I was Catholic. And when I preach, I'm preaching from experience. And I'm telling you, it's not about your religion, about your denomination, about Buddhism or Hinduism or whatever it is that you believe. It is about Christ, the Son of a living God. This man believed. And God started using him in mighty ways. He taught about speaking in tongues. He, he looked to the scripture and talked about the Acts of the Apostles and how on the day of Pentecost there was an appearing of the Holy Spirit. And it was not a one-time thing. It continues to happen in Acts 2, 17. The word of God declares in the last days, God is going to power out his spirit, power out his spirit upon all flesh. Our daughters and sons shall prophesy. Young men shall have visions. Men shall have dreams. Men and women shall prophesy. Praise the Son of the Lord. He preached that. And one time, God visited, visited. He was in a home. I'm in a home preaching from my home right now. Praise God. God visited them in the home. He was, he moved from, I think he was in Texas, someplace in Texas. I'm in Texas. Praise God. He went to California. Praise God. And that's where he met a certain group of women led by the Spirit of God. Praise God. In a small house, they prayed all night and, and they believed in the speaking of, uh, the, the Apango spirit and speaking in new tongues. And the Spirit of God showed up. They started speaking in new tongues. And lo and behold, people started coming and people being healed supernaturally. Praise the Son of a living God. People started being healed and receiving healing. They started a church. They went to a small Methodist church. And do, do not ever despise small beginnings. Praise the Son of Living God. They started in a small church that had been abandoned by the Methodist uh, um, uh, church at the time. And in this church uh, they, they, that had been transformed, it's, isn't it amazing how God works? This church had been had been transformed in a, a place where cattle was kept and and goats. And this is true. Look it up. Look like at Azusa Street Revival. That's how God starts his things. And so when I'm preaching these things, I'm telling you, brothers, friends, family, sisters, that God is about to move. Praise God. You must be ready. Praise the Son of a living God. And who shandra baba who shakaya? Who rabba shandra baba shakaya? Thank you, Jesus. This one-eyed man, they cleaned up, they cleaned up this church that had been abandoned. And there was cattle, there was dung, and they cleaned up dung and, 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 and goat poop. Cleaned it up, cleaned it up. And they put wooden chairs. They put wooden chairs there. It makeshift chairs, not even fancy chairs that we see in the church today. And then they started praying and praying because in the house, the congregation had started growing, growing. And they, they could not, in fact, they, they say that when he was preaching, he had started preaching outside on a, on a shed, on a balcony. For those of you who are familiar with the balcony. And the balcony at one time fell. And so that's why they saw the place and they went to this Azusa Street where they finally turned this place that had been abandoned, a Methodist church that had been abandoned, now a goat herding and a stable. It has been turned into a stable. Remember Christ, the son of a living God. Christ, the son of a living God, was born in a manger. He was born in a manger. And yes, there were goats and, 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 and sheep. He was born in a manger. Isn't it amazing that God used this man mightily in the same way? And so this man and together with the other sisters, other brothers, they cleaned up this place. They started praying and lo and behold, a mighty move of God, a mighty upon the spirit of the living God, the Shekinah glory of God showed up. God himself showed up. With the glory cloud, praise the Son of God. People started being healed supernaturally. They say miracles, signs, and wonders, according to that testimony, happened as has never been seen before. 
hands growing, eyeballs growing, teeth where people did not have teeth, rotten teeth being thrown out by the power of the Spirit of God and teeth growing. I'm talking about miracles, signs and wonders, tumors falling off, miracles, young teenagers being used by God. People came from all parts of the world to Azusa Street. God, God was glorified. The Son of the Living God was glorified. And it is these times that we're living in because in that time, and it happened for about four years, four years, there was a prophecy through that man of God who God used mightily and he had to humble himself. God told him to put a, a box over his head and kneel before people and pray. He would pray in tongues and pray in tongues. When he would come in the presence of the people, he would put a shoebox. They call it a shoebox. And as he prayed and waited, miracles would just start happening and happening because of obedience. Christ, the son of a living God, who was seated at the right hand of God, humbled himself, took on sinful flesh, praise the son of a living God, and died for you and I, praise the son of a living God. This man was used in mighty ways. And he's looking for each and every one of us to be humble. Miracles. They say miracles happen. People would be playing keyboard worshippers, worshipping with angels. And hands were being controlled by angels. They would be worshipping in the presence of God. Kids would be playing in the glory cloud. There was a Shekinah glory of God. For those of you who are familiar with the glory of God, the Shekinah, like a mist, the glory of God. Everybody that came, they said that everybody that came into the presence of that mist, they would be healed supernaturally. They would laugh hysterically because of the joy of the Lord. Praise God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise the Son of a living God. People would come from trains. Right? The trains would be like a, a little bit far off. But because of the power of God, they would be knocked down in the spirit. And they would be speaking in tongues right at the train platform. That is the power of God that I'm talking about. That is about to hit this world. In the mighty name of Jesus, the son of a living God. In the times that we're living in. Why am I saying this? And they say that there was a fire on that church, above the church, people would see a fire, the fire of God from heaven, connecting with the fire of the prayer warriors. That's why we need to pray and fast for these kinds of things to happen. Praise God. Here is where I'm going. In that Azusa revival, it was prophesied, praise the son of a living God, that a hundred years from then, and it happened in 1903. Please look it up. You can look it up for those of you who want to Google. Even on YouTube, it's there. The books are there, praise God. So what I'm telling you is the truth, praise God. During that revival, the Azusa revival, that led to a Pentecostal movement, that it led to so many churches coming up, Assemblies of God, Church of Christ, and a move of the Holy Spirit everywhere in the world. During that time, it was prophesied that a hundred years from that time, there would be another move of God greater than that of the Azusa revival. And that there will be miracles on a wider scale in every part of the nation, or in a part of the of the of the of the, of the world, not just the nation. The nation of this, uh, uh, the nation of America, yes, because it happened in America. But in every part of the world, it was prophesied. It would spread out. It would spread out. But the question is, are you and I ready? A hundred years from then, and we started seeing it. I'm telling you that I'm going to meetings and I'm seeing those things happening already. For those churches that believe in the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise the Son of living God. That is the time that is, that time is now. If you open up your heart. Praise God. I didn't want to go there, but I, I felt led by the Holy Spirit to testify of that. Praise God. These are the times. The last days when Christ said in the last days, I'm going to power my spirit upon all flesh. Our daughters and sons shall prophesy. Young men shall have visions. Men shall have dreams. Men and women shall prophesy. Praise God. Signs in heaven and on earth below. Praise God. A darkened sun, a blood moon before the great and awesome day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord is the coming of the Lord. And that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise the Son of a living God. Going back to Isaiah 58. Praise God. 
Oh, I feel so powerful in uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I feel it. Praise God. It says, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing when you fast. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. Those are the miracles. That's how I get I got there. Speedily. People would hands growing people who were came lepers people who came with without legs legs growing walking out of the wheelchairs people who had deformed faces their faces just growing the power of god no man can claim that kind of miracle it is the power of god it is god himself doing the work the glory of god which yes we've all seen a portion of the glory of god but he wants us to go back to that glory Adam and Eve fell from the glory of God, but the last Adam, a life-giving spirit, Christ, the Son of the living God, made it possible for us to have these things. In fact, he said in John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14, that the miracles that I do, the works that I do, you'll be able to do even more if you believe. Praise the Son of the living God, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That is what God wants to do in you and I, through you. Praise God. And he says, your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. And so when you pray and you answer, your prayers are not answered, are you praying, are you fasting the right way? Are you praying and fasting to the right God? Or are you praying and fasting the religious way? If you become born again, friend, family, accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, He says, and fast the if you're a born again believer and you're not fasting the real fast in spirit. You still don't get your answers, uh, your, 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 your prayers answered, praise God. But if you pray in faith, the prayer of a faithful and righteous person avails much praise god by grace through faith without faith it is impossible to please god we must believe that god is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him in fact what a god declares i has not seen first Corinthians 2 9 i has not seen ear has not heard. i decreed over your life i has not seen ear has not heard. no has it entered the heart of man what god is about to do for those that love him Yes, and he has revealed these things to us in the spirit. I'm a man of God. I'm telling you these things in truth and in love. I am believing for those miracles myself. I haven't seen them. God using me mightily and I want to see them. You must hunger and thirst for the righteousness of God. You must hunger and thirst for the move of God, for the move of the Holy Spirit. He said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's how you're going to see that. Praise God. That's how you're going to have your healing. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. Healing is spiritual in the soul and in the body. Praise God. He says, the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Praise God. The glory of God shall follow you. That's what it means. Praise God. Everywhere you go, the children of Israel, God, the, 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 the cloud of God led them by day. The pillar of fire led them by night. Today, whoever believes, we are led by the Spirit of the living God. For those that are led by the Spirit of the living God are the children of God. I come from Romans 8, 14. That's why it's important to be born again. Praise God. It says, if you take away the yoke from your midst, it says, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul. If you do the things that God has purposed for us to do. Not to be with evil and strive. To follow wickedness. To hate a brother, sister. To backstab one another. Even in the church. It says if you take away the yoke from your midst. Uh, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then you, your light shall dawn in the darkness. Christ has called us as a church to be the salt and light of the world. But why is the salt and light not working in this dark world? It is because of the hearts of men. It is because of religiosity and following doctrines of men and not giving in to the move of the Holy Spirit, to the leadership of the Spirit of the living God, not being born again. It's quite said, whoever believes in me, John 7, 38, out of their innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And it was speaking of the Spirit of the living God that only comes through faith in Christ 
the Son of a living God. Praise God. It says, if you extend your soul to the hungry, yes, if you have the Spirit of God in you, you have the love for the hungry. Praise God. And satisfy the afflicted soul. Praise God. You have love for those who are afflicted. And you will lay down your life for those who are afflicted, even as Christ laid down his life for each and every one of us. Praise the Son of a living God. Then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually. This is your word. And satisfy your soul in drought. Praise the Son of Living God and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden. Praise the Son of a Living God and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Spring of water whose waters do not fail, which Christ said, John 7, verse 38. Whoever believes in Him out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. This, friends, is speaking of Christ even today. Anybody that meditates on the word of the Lord and that does not sit in the council of the ungodly and those of a drunk, every time you're in a bar, you're in a strip club, you're in places that are dirty. The word of God declares, blessed are those who do not sit in the council of the ungodly, who do not sit in the seat of the, of the scornful, who do not sit or walk in the path of sinners, but meditate on the word of God day and night. They are like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, and it's time it grows fruit. Praise God. The Spirit of God is who sanctifies us. Praise God. He says, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to dwell in. Praise the Son of the living God. Azusa Street Revival. We saw it happen. Praise God. And from that street, Azusa Street, there was a spreading of the Spirit of God like fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 29 says, Our God is a consuming fire. Jeremiah 20, 29 says, He's in my word like fire. He's in my word like a hammer that crushes rocks into pieces. It is fire. Verse 13, I'm going to close. If you turn away from your, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, then their Sabbath has been abused. The Catholic Church now turned the Sabbath to a Sunday, a worship of uh, the Son God, the little God, the Son God. And now Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. The Word of God declares, praise God. But yet the church has to do certain things, change, pray. Let's pray about them because uh, the Sabbath, which is supposed to be on a Saturday by God's Word, in the Sabbath belongs to God. Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath, praise God, not according to the law of Moses, but Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. But yet, the Catholic Church changed the day of the Lord and they turned into, in, it into uh, Sunday, which is the day of worship by Constantine. If you look up the history, you'll find out, praise God. Now, while we believers know that we worship every minute, every second, yet the things of God, you cannot just turn them around just like that. A day that was dedicated to the worship of the sun God, you make it as a Sunday where people now are worshiping God, mixing God with little gods. The word of God declares God cannot be mixed. You cannot drink from a cup of the Lord and from the cup of demons. You cannot eat from the table of the Lord and from a table with demons. It says if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, nor doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now it's talking to the children of Israel, but yet this word in the new covenant, praise the Son of the living God, under Christ. Who is the Lord of a Sabbath? Praise God. He's still speaking even to us. Praise God. That we, might, we must praise and honor and glorify God. Even as he is God. He is God. He's the I am. He's the great I am. The same yesterday, today and forever. Praise God. He is the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the King of Kings. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's our Lord and our Savior, the Rock of our salvation. Friends, that is the Word of God about fasting. But Christ spoke of these things in Matthew 25. In the interest of time, I'm going to stop there. But in Matthew 25, 
Christ teaches that is coming back to separate the sheep from the goats. Praise the Son of the living God. Who are the sheep? The sheep are those that hear the voice of the Lord. He said in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Praise God. He's our great shepherd. Praise God. But why was he saying that he was coming back to separate the sheep from the goats? Because there were those who claimed to be of his fold, but yet they were not doing the will of God. In Matthew 25, the word of God declares that the sheep will be on his right hand. The goats will be on his left hand. He said that whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. In other words, he was saying that if you feed the hungry, if you feed the poor, if you take care of those that are in need, whether in the spirit, in the soul or body, praise the Son of the living God, you're doing his work. And some of you have been called to be apostles, teachers, prophets, men and women of God. You've been called to be evangelists, praise and worship leaders, uh, warriors to pray in the spirit on behalf of the church, on behalf of the nations. Some of you have been called to be prophets of nations like Jeremiah and you're despising yourself. But I'm here to tell you, arise and shine even as the word declares. He said, whatsoever you do to the least of my brother, brothers, that you do unto me. Matthew 25, praise God. Please read Matthew 25 from 31 to um, somewhere in 45, I believe. Praise God. It is speaking of the same thing. Because Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you take care of the hungry, if you take care of the poor, the naked, and clothe them with the spiritual clothing and physical clothing, not just the spiritual clothing, praise God. A lot of people pray, oh, I'll pray, about, I'll pray for him, but they are not willing to take some money out of their pocket to help the needy and the poor. They're not willing to pay tithes and offerings. They're not willing to take anything of their positions to share with those that are needy. Yet there are those who are doing those things, but yet they are not born again, or they are not in the spirit. They are not praying for those who are, need spiritual clothing, who need a garment of salvation, a garment of righteousness. They are not praying for those who are poor and need the treasures from on above, from on high. Praise God. The treasure, which is Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God. Praise God. Those who are sick, yes, there are those who are sick. You may be rich and you have, may have all the money in the world, but, but you are sick and you're on a, a deathbed. I have some of those in my family. I can tell you, you can have all the money in the world, but it will not buy you life. You can have all the money in the world, it will not buy you eternal life in heaven. Only Christ, the Son of the living God, gives us eternal life in heaven. God bless you abundantly. I'm going to close with a prayer because this is an hour of word and prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. I thank you for this teaching, Lord, and I thank you that it is touching each other one of our hearts, Lord. There are those who are sick. There are those who are in need, my Lord, my God, of, of spiritual clothing. There are those who are in need of physical clothing. There are those who are in need of physical food and spiritual food. Lord, you are the bread of life. Lord, you promise in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever receives me shall never hunger. Whoever receives me shall never thirst. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Lord, you are the bread of life. You are the bread of life, Lord. I pray that you nourish each and every one. I pray that my Lord, my God, even as King David said, he had been young and he had grown old. He had never seen the righteous forsaken. All his children begged for bread. Let us not beg for bread, Lord. You are our shepherd. You promise we shall never want, Lord. May your will be done in each and every one's life in the name of Jesus. Anybody that has any kind of sickness and disease, who's gone through poverty, death, luck, anybody that is going through any struggle with sin and unrighteousness in their soul, I pray that they are delivered supernaturally in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree supernatural healing, miracles, signs and wonders in their lives. A mighty move of God, a mighty empowering of the spirit of a living God. Anybody that's suffering from witchcraft, sorcery and divination, anything that is not of God, a spirit of evil, spirit of spiritism, necromancy, seducing spirits, spirit of religion, spirit of Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Islam, anything, even religion among Christians who are following religiosity and not the power of God, denying the power of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power of God. I pray that they are delivered, each and every one of them, each and every one of them. Any struggle that we have, myself inclusive, any yokes on our shoulders and our necks, let it be broken by reason of anointing. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
May the fire of the Spirit of the living God prevail even as it was in the day of Azusa, Lord, in the times of Azusa revival, Lord. We need that awakening, the mighty move of God, the mighty empowering of the Spirit of the living God as has never been seen before. In the name of Yeshua, Hura Baba Shandara Baba Shakaya, in the name of Jesus. Anybody struggling with pornography, masturbation, anybody struggling with pedophilia, bestiality, incest, anybody struggling with any kind of sorcery, divination, witchcraft, struggling with anything, even homosexuality, struggling with any kind of sickness and disease in a spirit, soul, or body, Jesus, in your mighty name, Lord. As a servant of God, I'm standing firm on the word of the Lord and decreeing and declaring. Even as you said in Luke 10, 19, that you gave us the power and authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. But that we should not rejoice that demons are subject to us, but that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Lord, you accept me as, your pass as a, a child of God in the kingdom of God. I accepted you as my personal Lord and Savior, and you accepted me as, my, as, as a child of God in the kingdom of God. I pray for every soul to accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, that we may all be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. May the fire of the Spirit of a living God prevail in our hearts. May the will of the Lord be done in our hearts. Sanctify us, Holy, Holy Spirit of God. Sanctify our souls, our spirits. Sanctify us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Yeshua. In the name of Jesus. We have prayed. Please join me in prayer because the word of God declares where two agree on anything, it shall be done by my Father in heaven, Christ said. And I'm believing for your deliverance, my deliverance, our family's deliverance. There are some that are struggling in your marriages, struggling with divorce. There are some who are single, yeah, they are going through fornication. That is a sin. First Corinthians 6, 9 to 10, the word of God declares, and nobody that practices fornication, sodomy, and homosexuality, adultery, witchcraft, sorcery, that shall make it to the kingdom of God. That is sin. And some of you, even believers, are still struggling with those things. I pray that you are delivered supernaturally. I decree that you are set free in the name of Jesus, the Son of a living God. Yes, some of you yeah, do not have partners and you're praying for partners. I pray in the name of Jesus that the right partner, the right man of God, the right woman of God, God delivers them to you in the name of Jesus. That you may walk in the anointing of the Spirit of God, in the leadership of the Spirit of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Any spirit of perversion of any sort, lust of the eyes of the flesh of the heart, and yes, there are temptations. When you're looking, there are temptations. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Go through fornication. You're a young girl, a young boy. I have teenagers myself. I tell them the same things. Do not be tempted. Fornication is a sin as much as adultery for those who are married. A married man, married woman, there's no reason why you should be looking at another man, another woman. For a married man, another woman, and a married woman, another man. And if you're practicing homosexuality, that is evil. The truth told in love. But God loves each and every one of us, praise God. And he came to call sinners to repentance. And I pray that his goodness leads each and every one of us to repentance. That we may all be redeemed and saved. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. May the Spirit of the living God prevail against the enemy. May the fire of the Spirit of the living God that fights on our behalf. May the blood of Jesus Christ that speaks better things than that of Abel fight on each and everyone's behalf. In the name of Jesus, the Son of a living God, we have prayed. Anybody that's suffering from any kind of sickness, cancer, I'm talking about lupus, I'm talking about any bipolar disease, anything, fibroids, thyroid cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, I can name any sickness. Christ died on the cross that we may be redeemed. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of broad peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. Any person practicing witchcraft and sorcery and divination like that person that called me, 
I pray that you are delivered supernaturally in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of witchcraft and sorcery, divination, spiritism, anything that's not of God, seducing spirits, lying spirits, serpentine spirits from hell. I burn them to ashes in the name of Jesus. The word of God declares, in my word like fire, in my word like a hammer that crushes rocks unto pieces. I decree and declare that you are set free from witchcraft, sorcery, and divination in the name of Jesus, the Son of a living God. From India, Europe, Asia, every nation, I pray that you are delivered supernaturally in the mighty name of Jesus. May the fire of the Spirit of living God prevail in your families, in your offices, in your businesses. May the blood of Jesus Christ that speaks better things than that of Abel fight on our behalf, on behalf of our jobs, on behalf of our families, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of religion, anything that is anti-Christ. I bind it right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of a living God. Even as we read in Isaiah 58, verse 8, let your light break forth. If you're a believer and you're fasting the right way, if you're not, still, I pray that you have a revelation and God reveals to you the truth. And uses you in mighty ways that you may be the sword and light of the world. Praise God that God has called you to be. Praise God. Let your light break forth like morning. Let your healing spring forth speedily in the name of Jesus, the Son of a living God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you quicken our spirits. You quicken our hearts in the mighty names. I call mighty angels, angels of fire, angels of strength. Angels are ministering spirits to do the work of God. God is the Lord of hosts who sends mighty angels on our behalf that we may do the work that God has called us to do. We cannot do the work that God has called us to do in the spirit if God, the Lord of hosts, does not send angels to help us. The Lord of hosts is God who sends mighty angels on our behalf. Let mighty angels of fire, angels of strength, angels of healing, angels of finance prevail in your families. Be blessed mightily in the name of Jesus. Let angels of woe, yes, attack the angels of Satan in the mighty name of Jesus. Angel Michael, angel Gabriel, angels of fire, angels of strength to fight on our behalf in the name of Jesus. I'm going to close with this. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 7, the war broke out in heaven. The word of God declares, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. The dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon that old serpent called the devil, yes, the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and fortunately was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast, were cast out with him. That's why you see all this demonic activity, the devil fighting and bringing sickness and disease, poverty, dead and luck. But thank God, Christ died on the cross. Listen to verse 10, it says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. But look at verse 11. And this is where the power is. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Praise the Son of the living God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. Every believer rejoices together with the angels in heaven. Because once you believe, you're now reconciled to our Father in heaven. In the blood of Jesus Christ, we have victory. In the blood of Jesus Christ, we have victory supernatural deliverance and the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We have supernatural healing. Our healing is speedily received in the name of Jesus. 12 says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath. That's why you see all this evil going on. The wrath is not of God, but the devil is knows that his time is short. And listen to what he says. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. He has a short time. That's why he's fighting. But thank God. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, according to the word of God in Colossians 2 verse 15, died on the cross and he made a public spectacle. Oh, I love that word. Of all principalities and powers and triumphed over them. 
We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. May God bless you abundantly. May the blood of Jesus Christ prevail in your situation. In the mighty name of Jesus, God bless you.